Hello, it's Scott Manley here. A few weeks ago, I had a big problem with a Deep Space update. I had accidentally left a product in the backdrop that I'd been given by the manufacturer uh, and it wasn't supposed to be public knowledge. So I had to redact it and they did so in the most comical way possible. So I can finally show you what it is and it is uh, the Veonis Vespera 2 X edition. So this the Vespera 2 is a telescope they've made for a while. It's a smart telescope, which means you uh, you run it with an app. It has computers on board. It will track the objects on the sky. It will find them for you. And then as it is imaging them, it will uh, sum the images over time to reduce the signal to noise, bring out the details of the backdrop. So you can actually see the details of the nebula. And this way it, it makes, uh, you know, taking astronomical images of those beautiful nebula accessible to pretty much anyone. Now, this isn't the only kind of telescope, the only manufacturer. I looked at another one last year. This is one I'm looking at this year. And so before we go any further, I want to show this image I took, which is M31, also known as Andromeda. Now, this was not taken under super dark skies. This was totally an urban environment, but it is a 24 megapixel image, which is integrated over 10 hours. And that wasn't 10 hours on one night, that is over multiple nights because the telescope has the ability to do that. Also, the size of Andromeda is larger than the field of view of the telescope. The onboard software lets you set up a mosaic and it will autonomously scan around the area, imaging it and then summing it all up into one big image right at the end. And look, I know there are a lot of you out there that are, take far better astrophotos than myself and are hearing 10 hours on Andromeda, that's it. Well. Look, this was set up in an app and I would set it up every night, take it outside for a couple of hours before the clouds rolled in, before it got too hazy. And then eventually after a few days, I had this and I was quite impressed by the fact that it could cover this. So I kind of want to make it clear that this kind of capability is not unique to this telescope by any means. There are multiple digital telescope systems that basically do what I used to do many years ago. I had this small... 10 centimeter 4 inch refractor and it was on an equatorial mount and I could put a camera on the end of it and start imaging. Now in the old days of long exposure you just had to have an incredibly accurate mount that was able to track without the stars jittering around. I didn't have that. I had a cheap Chinese mount which did a reasonable good job as long as I didn't let it track for more than about 30 seconds. So if I limited my exposure to under 30 seconds then I could just take lots and lots of images and add up the exposures over time. There were various pieces of software I would work with which would identify the stars and match them up between subsequent frames. They could also correct for things like field curvature where the angles at the centre of the field are different from angles at the edge of the field. You would take dark images so that you knew which pixels on the sensor were reading a bit high or a bit low. Flat fields would just look at the distribution of light across the image because at the edge of the image it might not get as much light as in the center of the image. And so the telescope and the mount was maybe $500, the camera was maybe $1000, but my time, boy did it use a lot of my time to take these images which I was proud of at the time, but wow, that is not a great image. And so the idea of putting all this into a single platform and having it do all this for you, that sort of began with Unistellar about 10 years ago with a Kickstarter. And since then, we've had Veonis who make this. And there's, of course, various companies in China that are doing their own sort of lower cost knockoffs. And so Veonis sent me this, asked me if I wanted to look at it, review it, give you my impression of the strengths and the weaknesses. So let's talk about it. So this in particular is the X edition and the X edition has a transparent case and, <laughs> and of course you know that reminds me of the old iMac back around well wow, it was last millennium yes where everything suddenly became began becoming transparent well maybe that trend is back in and I actually like the transparent casing because what it lets me see on this is that a lot of the core mechanical parts on it are metal Right. There's not a lot of structural stuff in here that is plastic. Obviously the case, but you know, when you've got a telescope, it has to be able to hold the position and slew very accurately. And you can see that all those critical parts are constructed out of metal. You can see some of the other workings going on during it. But of course, a lot of you want to talk about the optics and the optics are sort of locked away behind this arm a lot of the time. That's a great way of storing it. 
The imaging system is uses a 50 millimeter uh, quad element refractor system. It uh, is 250 millimeter focal length f5 ratio that projects onto a 8 megapixel Sony sensor. And according to the specs, that'll get down to 16th magnitude. And while I didn't verify that, I did manage to get a photo of Comet Atlas, which I believe was about 15th magnitude at the time. They do have a system for mounting filters. They have a solar filter, a light pollution filter available if you want those. But I found the software did a pretty good job of subtracting out the light pollution and giving me decent images. But of course, this is a telescope. We're showing you this in the daylight so you can actually see it. I'm going to have to show you how it works at night. But of course, at night, it's a lot harder to see things. So yeah, you're going to have to deal with some low quality video as I set this thing up. Also, I somehow didn't record the audio here. So yeah, basically set this thing up on my little deck out here. Hold the button to turn it on for a few seconds. It turns blue. The cat walks through completely oblivious. And now I bring up the Singularity app. And the Singularity app is supposed to talk to the telescope. The telescope primarily is com uh, communicating through Wi-Fi. Go into the Wi-Fi settings on my iPhone. I find the telescope is showing up as a Wi-Fi base station. Vespera with the, the code, you know, the serial number. Switch back to the app and it shows up a moment later. So now the telescope knows where you are on the planet because it has GPS from your phone. But to figure out what direction it's pointing, it has to open up and look at the sky. So obviously this is a wonderful clear night, which you can't tell because a GoPro just really isn't that sensitive to stars. But when I push the initialize button on the telescope, it starts to open its arm. And you can barely see the arm coming out there. There you go. So that is going to point up to the sky. And what it's going to look for is stars. And it has a database of all the bright stars it might see and how they might be distributed across the sky. So once it starts finding those stars, it starts matching them to the location. It surveys a few different locations on the sky. And that then lets it build a model of where it is and where it's pointing so that when you ask to point it in a specific direction, it knows exactly how to do it. So now once it's in that state, yeah, you can set up an observation. So I just take a look around at the objects that are available to me. I see NGC 7635, which I favorited because I wanted to have something which required a, you know, a mosaic setup, right? So when you're setting up an observation, you can actually specify exactly how you want it framed. And again, when it uses the mosaic, it will scan the telescope around the area, making sure that it can cover a wider area than the field of view of the telescope. Now from there, it's gonna start slewing towards the target. And this can take a couple of minutes because not only is it slewing to where it thinks it needs to be, it also then finds the relevant stars, makes sure that it's in exactly the right place, and then actually will start imaging. During this time, it can be a few minutes and some of the uh, more prominent, well-known targets during this, you can hit play and it will play you like a nice little voiceover explaining the significance of this object. It's mythology. It's, you know, relevance to science, other stuff like that. Uh, I didn't notice this until much later because I generally have the sound turned off on my phone. I am going to say that the software quality on this did seem to be better than other options I've tried. Uh, very, very slick, very well presented. And the fact that it does the whole mosaic mode on board and can do multi-night observations really moves it a step up from other options. But now it's gathering photons, it's building that image. I'm not needed. My time here is done. I'm going to go inside, you know, put the phone nearby because, you know, Wi-Fi works through glass. I'm going to make myself a cup of tea and do some other work while this takes the image for me. Just over an hour later, it's uh, got up to 45 minutes worth of exposure time. I think it drops some frames from time to time, depending upon quality. But, you know, there's details starting to come out here. And because this is a multi-night observation, I could come back tomorrow night. As it happened, I didn't come back because the weather hasn't really been cooperating. Regardless, I just wanted to show you that the software is pretty easy to use. It's actually pretty good software, I think. Uh, I got a few other images I took here, of course, is the Orion Nebula. That was actually a pretty short exposure, but I really just wanted to see how well it would do because it's a target I know well. There's the Pleiades. Again, this time of year, you can just start to see the nebulosity. And I can tell you that this one is NGC 7000 because that's what the file is named.
And yeah, I know some of you skeptical people out there have pointed out you could do this with software. You could just download these images of well-imaged objects from the internet and pretend that the telescope is working. But I got up at 4 a.m. and I was able to image Comet Atlas in the pre-dawn sky. This isn't the best image I got, but it's the best image I got with this telescope. This is an interstellar object which has never been seen by humans before and will never be seen again. This is just after perihelion. I was very happy to be able to capture this historic object. So now while all the images I showed you were pretty much created by the onboard software using its own frame, you know, addition techniques, if you want to set it up, you can in fact get the raw images out and you can go over the things and calibrate them and do your darks and your flats and all that other stuff and subtract and create beautiful images of your own making. If that is the kind of thing you want to do, it's still an option. I don't see a lot of people doing it. I am just, you know, impressed by what it can actually do on its own, using its own capabilities. So this is it building out sort of various levels of my image of Andromeda. And I want to end one with one other thing. So I did look at another telescope, the Unistellar Odyssey, and I also took an image of Andromeda with that. And while it has bigger optics and generates a better image more quickly, it has a smaller field of view and it doesn't have mosaic. So you basically only get the inner core of Andromeda. And to be clear, because it only looked at that small area, I didn't actually spend much time on it, unlike this, which is like 10 hours of photon shooting goodness. And so yeah, that is the Veonis Vespera 2 X edition. Uh, as I understand, it's the same as the regular edition. It just has the transparent case. So, you know, depending on av availability or looks, you might want to go with the one without the transparent case. I understand it will take the same images one way or another. And that's really what it's about. It takes these fine images. The advantages over, say, the Unistellar, which I looked at, uh, has a wider field of view and it has that mosaic capability in the app. So you can take these wide images of things like the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, but it obviously takes longer to take those images. It's a bit cheaper, a bit smaller, um, and that may be to your advantage. So yeah, you know, if, if you're looking for a present for an astronomy nerd in your family that uh, is worth the money, this might be something to consider. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.